Hey guys, CV Super. Peter Jones asked if we could create a simple call out in Fusion, one that a beginner could follow. Absolutely. That is a great suggestion. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, now that we have essentially a clean plate with just this video footage of this uh, winter shot here, it's a winter drone shot that's going to need a little bit of tracking as well as some match moving. Like I always say, this is one way to do a simple, very basic call out. There is hundreds of different ways, thousands probably, that we could have done this. This is just one way that would be really easy to follow. All right, so one of the first things we have to do before we even start adding anything to our footage is we need to figure out and plan where we want this animation to take place and when. So if I scroll through the footage here, I'm gonna just use the exact same little piece of ice that I used earlier, but I need to decide at what frame do I wanna start the animation and what frame do I wanna end the animation and make sure that whatever I'm tracking inside of here is going to actually be in the frame the entire animation. So I could start at 90 and I can maybe track it out a little bit, maybe to like 180 or something like that. Looking down here in the node graph, we can see we have a media in and we have a media out. So everything that we're going to do is going to be in between the media in and the media out. So let's go ahead and with the media in selected, I'm going to go ahead and shift space and type in track. That's going to bring me a tracker. I want this one, the TRA tracker, not the camera tracker or the planar tracker. I'm going to use this uh, regular tracker node. And you'll notice that it drops this little green tracker over here um, somewhere on the footage. So I know I want to track from 100 to, we'll just say 200. So I'm actually going to start at 200. I'm actually going to start a little bit further. Let me go to 220. I'm going to move this tracker by holding down this little uh, corner here. I'm going to move it until it's at some little area that has a good amount of contrast. And I'm actually going to track backwards. So the second one is track reverse from the current time. And I'm just going to track this back a bit. All right. And that's probably pretty good. All right. Now that's going to create all of these keyframes for this track information. Now I'm going to kind of zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to press play just to make sure that it stays exactly where I want it to stay. Nope, it starts to come off a little bit, but that's only because we've run out of tracking information. So that's okay. We know that we want our animation to take place right around 120 to, we'll say 180. And as long as the track is good there, that's enough to get us going. Now you could obviously track this longer and you could have more tracking information. And that might be useful if you're gonna use this for other additional callouts inside of the same footage. But for what we're doing and our purposes, this is plenty. All right, with the tracker selected, come over to the second tab and just for the operation, go ahead and click it over to match move. And then that's pretty much it. We are completely done with all of the tracking. Now I can go ahead and I can just kind of move this tracker out of the way. I'm gonna disconnect it and I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. And this is in case if I wanna merge this in or out later once I get the, the, the rest of the composition going. We have somewhat of a plan now. We want from 120 to 180, I wanna have some kind of call out that comes out. Now I know I'm gonna need a text and probably some kind of point and maybe a line and then I have to animate all those things together. Let's go ahead and start creating all of the assets. First, let me just go ahead and bring in some text. Okay, that's our text. I'm gonna bring in a ellipse so the tracker is going to be closest to the merge node because all of this information, everything that we create is going to need that tracker information in order to stay put where we want it to. We can go ahead and we can start plugging some of these things in. I'm going to bring in a background node and I'm going to plug this ellipse into the background node. But I want the background node to actually be white. You can use whatever color you want. In fact, if you keep using the background nodes, the nice thing about this is that it's going to allow you to change the color anytime you want without having to go through all of the individual nodes. Now the text will be a little bit different because we're going to keep that separate since we're going to animate it separately. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make this ellipse a little smaller. Now, 
Since I'm going to want it to stay as an ellipse, I'm going to use the simple little trick of inside the height. I'm just going to double click so it highlights everything and I'm going to hit the equal sign and then enter. And then I'm going to take this little plus sign and I'm going to drop it on top of the width. And now I can control the width and the height at the same time using one slider. And this is just going to make it a little bit easier when I start to animate things. I'm going to be able to just animate one slider versus having to animate two sliders and maintain some kind of numerical value that, that would make it the same. So let's go ahead and from 120 to 180, we're going to go ahead and play it. And let's just move this over our point that we tracked earlier. Make this a little bit smaller maybe. And then press play. All right. It looks like it's tracking pretty well. All right, so that's good. It tracks from 120 to 180. And now we can go ahead and we can build a line. We could also animate this, but we're gonna go ahead and animate it last once everything is already built. With that ellipse, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring in a some kind of polyline. Now I'm gonna use a polyline because I'm in version 16.2. If you're in version 16.1, you may wanna use a paint node uh, and I'll show you the difference at the very end. Since I'm in 16.2, I'm going to go ahead and use this polyline. And I'm just going to make a really simple line that goes from the center here. Maybe it's going to come out a little bit and then it's going to... Now one thing when you're doing a call out, you want it to be visible. So you should probably put the call out somewhere where there isn't a whole lot of busy footage behind it. You could even darken it up if you wanted to, to make it a little bit more visible. You could uh, darken the entire screen to make it pop out quite a bit more. There's all kinds of different things you could do, but since this is a basic tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it the way that it is. I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna drop it into this ellipse and I'm gonna take this polygon and I'm gonna click off of solid and I'm gonna turn up the border width just a little bit till we can see it. One of the first things I noticed is that it's not actually in the center. So I'm just going to move it over just a little bit. If yours ends up uh, doing something different, like it ends up closing it, all you have to do is you can come over to the modify only and just click on that and it won't add any additional points, but you can still move these points around. All right, and you can kind of click off of it, make sure it looks somewhat center. That's pretty center. It's, it's close enough. The thing that we'll be animating in this will be this length. So in 16.2, you can uh, actually animate the length and the position, and now you can get a different effect inside the actual node itself. You used to, you used to have to actually do this in a paint node, and let me show you really quickly how to do it in a paint node. If, that's the, if you're not using 16.2, you might have to use a paint node. And I'll show you how to do the exact same thing. Just create a background with a paint node. Um, the background you can go ahead and leave as black and turn the alpha all the way down and that's so it just makes it transparent. Uh, with the paint selected, you're going to want to come over to this selection that's the polyline stroke. And we can just make our line like so. Come into the brush controls and if you want zero softness you can just turn the softness all the way down. Again, once you get it to, to this point and you don't want to add any more points in, all you have to do is come up to the modify only, which is going to be uh, the arrow pointing to the, the little node there. Now you can, you can kind of move it around here if you need to. And then you can come into stroke controls and you can use this right on effect. So if you want the end to come in, you would animate this. Um, and essentially, and then you can grab it like this and you can do the exact same thing. So this is how you would have done it previously prior to 16.2. So if you're working in 16.1, that's what you'll use. All right, so let's get back to this. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and extend the length all the way out for now so I can kind of see it. And I'm just gonna let it play through to make sure that from 120 to 180 that it is tracking. All right, it looks like it's tracking pretty good. And then with the text, I'm just gonna merge these two together. And the nice thing about the text is that we don't actually even have to use a transform node. We can if you wanna keep it separate, but you can just move this over and you can put your text wherever you want. All right, and it continues to track perfectly. So I'm gonna to come to 120. Now that I have everything built in, 
I'm gonna simply start animating it. Now, I'm just gonna do a general animation. So the first thing I'm gonna want is I actually want this ellipse to kind of blip on at right at 120. So I'm gonna be using this width controller in order to actually control the visibility. Right at, we'll just say 120. We'll go one frame forward in time and I'm gonna turn it all the way down and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the keyframe. Now I'm gonna go maybe five frames, one, two, three, four, five, using my arrow key to go five frames forward. And I'm just going to increase the width until it's at the point where I actually want it to be. All right, we'll just say it's right there and that looks pretty good. I want these things to happen a little bit on their own. I'm gonna go another five frames in time and then I'm going to animate the line on. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna click on this polygon line. I'm gonna turn the length all the way down. And then I'm gonna hit this diamond over here for a keyframe. And now I'm gonna go five more frames. One, two, three, four, five, using my right arrow key. And I'm gonna extend the length all the way out. All right, and now I can come back over here to 120. And we'll go ahead and hit the space bar to preview. Okay, that looks good. Um, one thing you will notice though, is that you can actually see this little dot here. And the reason you see that dot is because the length doesn't get rid of it completely. It just starts it at a small point in time. So in order to get rid of this dot so that it doesn't show before the ellipse comes on, we're actually gonna have to use this level control. And to do that, I can just simply turn the level all the way down. I can keyframe it on and now I can move forward to right about maybe there because at that point the ellipse is starting to come on so it will cover the dot now i can just turn the level all the way up you'll see that there is no dot so that's just a simple little way to just get rid of that dot uh, when you're trying to animate a polygon line okay now we need to animate this text on All right, so we can do this in several different ways. We could either use the animation inside of the text, inside the text node. We can have it just appear on, or we could even have it come on as the line gets longer, which is, I think, what I did in the demo. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that same way now. And the easiest way to do this would be just to go back in frames here. And right around here, we go ahead and with the text node selected, I can just create a rectangle mask and make this rectangle mask roughly around the same size as the actual text itself. Now all I have to do is animate the center of the rectangle. I can come over to where it says center and over on the far right, click on that triangle or click on that diamond. And go forward in time. Go forward in time again. Keep going just one frame at a time until the entire text is now visible. All right, and let's go ahead and preview that. All right, so that comes on pretty easy. It's maybe a little um, sharp, right? So you could add just a little bit of soft edge and that will just give it a slightly nicer look to it. And now we have to do the animation off. So we'll probably just reverse the process just to make it easy on ourselves. So at 180, we want this entire thing to be done. So let's just go ahead and work in reverse. The first thing that needs to go right there, or the very last thing that will show will be this dot, the ellipse. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go five frames forward in time. One, two, three, four, five, using my left arrow keys. Click on the ellipse, click on the width. On the width, I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe it because I gotta set that keyframe. Now I'm gonna go five frames back over to 180 and I'm just gonna drop the width all the way down. Now I'm gonna go back five frames and I'm going to fix the polygon line now. So right around here, we want the length to be completely done. So I'm gonna go forward. So I'm gonna go forward in time, another five frames, one, two, three, four, five, using my left arrow key and I'm just gonna keyframe the length and I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five and I'm gonna drop the length all the way down. It's gonna create an automatic keyframe there. All right, that takes care of the line. 
I'm going to go back over to where the line it started. And I'm going to go forward in one, two, three, four, five again. And now I'm going to do the rectangle. So it was the rectangle center. I'm going to go ahead and keyframe it to put a hold on that keyframe. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Instead of actually animating it how we normally did, where we just have the text come on and off, I'm actually just going to animate it as the line starts to move away. So I'm just going one frame at a time. All right. And let's just kind of take a look at the entire animation now. And this is without playing with any of the keyframes or anything. Okay, so we still have that dot. So again, we have to come back into the polygon and let's go to right here. This is where the dot starts to get smaller. And if you wanna see where the dot starts to get smaller, all you have to do is go onto the ellipse and you can see where those keyframes are. On the polygon, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the level, maybe come forward a couple frames, not too many, and then uh, drop it all the way down. That's pretty much it. We showed how to actually create this. You know, now that I watch this over and again, I really don't like the softness. So I think what I would do is I would come back in here and I would just remove that soft edge from that rectangle. And uh, probably just call it a day. So if you're interested, you could copy all of this, probably not the tracker node, but you could copy all of this right here and you could turn this into a macro or even a template so you could use it in uh, projects later on. If you guys are interested in learning how to do that, I have another video where I show how to do that. It'll be up there in the upper right hand corner uh, in the card. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.